What's up guys? If you left a comment in the comment section of the last weekend video that I did, then you are entered into the giveaway of two wrecks, which is going to be two separate winners. And if you're somebody that used my referral link in the description below my videos in order to create your Rift account, if you're one of the winners, you're going to win 10 times that amount of wrecks. And we just had one of those type of winners just recently, so it does happen. And the two winners of the wrecks are... Boom, congratulations, we'll be sending your wrecks to you just shortly. Once again, thank you to everybody that makes donations and spurs these giveaways. Every time you guys make a donation via the PayPal link or Patreon link that we have down there now, then it spurs giveaways for all the viewers. So those that make donations, thank you. It's always fun to give away stuff. What's up guys, Grim here. Today we're going to talk about the state of PvP going into the year of 2016. And there's things that are good, things that are bad, some misconceptions, uh, things that need to be changed, things that do not need to be changed. There's just so many things to go over and I'm kind of going to shoot from the hip with a lot of this video. It's not going to be very edited like my past state of PvP video. So it's basically going to be me rambling about a lot of things and just letting you guys know what's going on and i'm sure i'm going to miss a lot of points and stuff like that because this is not really scripted uh but we're going to go at it and see how we do all right so the first thing anybody is going to notice whenever they go into pvp is that range classes are dominant and they've been dominant ever since nightmare tide came out and it's one of the things that everybody has been complaining wanting changed is for range classes not to be as strong well, the thing is, is a lot of things are uh, adjusted for the PvE side, and then it transitions over into PvP. Uh, all the complaining about range classes, and Tryon has acknowledged that range classes are a little bit too strong in PvP, is that all of a sudden on the PvE side, these range classes are needing buffed up a little bit, so they buff them up, and it transitions into PvP. Take for instance the recent Inquisitor buff. They they buffed up Inquisitor and Inquisitor was already really well, really good in PvP. And then they buffed up Pyromancer, which that was already really good in PvP. Uh, yeah, so it, they're buffing up these range classes because of the PvE aspect. And then it transitions over into PvP and makes it to where they're just, you know even stronger and did they need to be stronger probably not in pvp maybe in pve but not in pvp so it makes it really rough to run any kind of other spec other than ranged right now because if you're running a melee spec and you run into the enemy team the first thing that's going to happen is everybody's going to tab target and they're going to target you and most people are putting their cc's in their spam buttons so instantly you get cc'd and you get cc'd again and again and again these range classes have so much cc along with their really good damage that it makes it nearly impossible to play melee unless you are in something like a blighted antechamber or if you're using pocket healers and you know what what spec isn't going to be pretty strong if you don't run pocket healers on so that's how a lot of people are justifying uh, not buffing up melee is it already does good damage and if it has a pocket healer it can, it can survive. Well yeah every spec can survive if it's got pocket healers for the most part. So ranged is extremely strong. Melee is not got the survivability. It does not have the CC and uh, but most of the main melee builds have really good damage such as like a paragon warlord uh shaman i mean there's just a lot of melee builds that do good damage but can they survive once they get tab targeted not really and they don't have the utility to back it up so otherwise it's a losing battle however there are some buffs coming up that hopefully it'll change things around a little bit um uh, like i said ranged has already been buffed up they buffed up tempest they buffed up inquisitor uh pyromancer you know a lot of these things are being buffed up but they're all range specs well now they're talking about that they're going buff up shaman to make it to where like massive blow or critical hit every time and you think that shaman is just super weak it doesn't have the utility it's a melee class you know it can blow people up already 
So does it need to be buffed up to where massive blow is going to critical hit every time? Well, possibly. I mean, any kind of buff to shaman is probably going to be a good thing because it's it's needed. The bad part is the time to kill in game is really low. As in, if you are fighting somebody, it's going to be decided by somebody getting nuked instantly almost. And with Vulcanist having the, the ethereal beam that is blowing people up, Pyromancer is blowing everybody up, Inquisitor has lots of burst abilities so they can blow people up, Marksman is doing so much damage it is blowing people up. If you get into melee range, Paragon can blow you up, Shaman can blow you up, I mean just all these specs are able to instantly nuke you and there's more than that I mean that's just off the top of my head and that makes it to where it takes the skill out of PvP now skill in PvP has never really been based around like button pushing you know you don't you don't have to have a million buttons in order to be effective in PvP because it's more about movement it's about choosing the right targets about line of sight uh, marking your targets. I mean, there's just so many things that are different in PvP versus PvE, and that's where the skill in PvP comes from. It's not from button mashing, it's, you know, picking your targets, line of sight, and all that stuff. Well, whenever somebody is instantly nuked, you don't have time to line of sight this stuff usually. Uh, so if you are getting nuked, you have just a couple of seconds to try to line aside them instead of, you know, getting away from it and, you know, getting distance, running behind something. Uh, if your interrupt is on cooldown, you are just going to die instantly. And it's really bad. I mean, if somebody targets you and you don't have them targeted to even interrupt them, yeah, you're, you're just dead. It's just how it works right now. Burst classes are just so strong and there's so many of them. So, yeah, it, it's insane the time to kill right now. But there are ways to fix these things. I don't like to say a lot of things are bad and then not offer solutions. I would like to say that one of the good things that you can do is to remove some of the CC from range classes because along with all of the damage that they can do at ranged it's kind of a bad thing to give them tons of cc too now all range classes should have some form of root that is like a standard with range builds now after the root should they have a confuse should they have a stun should they have a debilitate should they have all a knockback all these things Probably not all that. I mean, range classes just have so many CCs, and also they can strip your buffs from range and all that. And I don't think that buff stripping should be done at ranged. I don't think CCs should be done too much at range. It should be root and maybe a knockback for range classes. That should be their CC for the most part because. You've got to be able to get away from melee classes if they get on you, but you shouldn't have the ability to lock them down like WoW has it. WoW has it to where you can CC somebody, then you can CC them again, and then again and again, and it's just on diminishing returns, and then you can use a different CC after that and go ahead and CC them some more. It shouldn't be that way in Rift because Rift PvP has always been drastically different. It's not been based around CCs. It's been based around action. Uh, something in WoW like a warrior will have a charge. If they're lucky, they can have two charges. A uh, Death Knight can have a pull. Uh, 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 what is it? Hunter can have a leap back. Well, guess what? In Rift, you can have three charges on a warrior. You can have two pulls. You can have a leap back or two. They're all on one spec. You know, all those things are on one thing. So it's based around action rather than CCs. And for CCs to dominate the way that they are right now is really a bad direction for Rift. It's not the way that I like to play. And I like, I like CCs to be a, a little bit of a game changer as in if somebody comes up to my melee guy, you know, if I have a debilitate or something, I like to be able to use it in order to stop them for a couple of seconds. 
you know I don't want it to be five seconds or eight seconds or something like that I want it to be a little bit of a game changer to where it can it can mean the difference you know somebody uh, starts using their burst ability perfect time to debilitate them or something you know just do something to stop them you know the a paragon pops their alacrity boom debilitate them you know do something to where it's skill based rather than just spamming spam buttons and just pouring cc's on the people another thing is that cc's need to be on a global cooldown uh or uh basically you do not need cc's that you can just put into your uh into your spam buttons and it not hinder your dps so if you got uh uh cc that you can stick into your marksman spam button and it will you know interrupt and debilitate you know every time you're spamming and finally somebody goes to cast something that's a cast time and boom you interrupted them you debilitated them and it, it didn't even global cooldown it was just you know a fraction of a second that fired off and you're right back into dpsing well, on a global cooldown, that would mean that, you know, your global cooldown will go off where the whole hand goes around and your ability is, you know, it uses an ability uh, if you don't understand how it works. That's how all CCs should be. And it's crazy that there are CCs that are not on the global cooldown. Um, so that, that needs to be addressed. I don't think that range classes or even melee probably need something like that that's off of a global cooldown. It just encourages no strategy, uh, no skill, and those are the things that everybody likes to see in PvP. They like to see skill, excel, and for things like that not to be the game changer. Okay, we've kind of touched on a lot of abilities and stuff. Let's touch on the gear issues. Now, right now, there's a lot of misconceptions about gearing, and I've been guilty of it myself. I've been led down a, a path that I thought was right, and turns out maybe it's not, but maybe it is. Let's see. All right, so going into it, basically, there is the misconception, or else it may be true, but we need to find out the truth of it, is that raid gear is better than pvp gear as in the marauder chest gear they can be upgraded into warmonger gear because warmonger gear is of course the new gear that you can upgrade to whenever you use the gear from your marauder cache so the warmonger gear is supposed to be the top gear that you can have in pvp the thing is is that if you come in with raid gear it's supposed to be down bolstered to pretty much the same level of warmonger gear and this is something that i've been told is not the case uh if you read the forums you'll see people going no it's not the it's not the case well is it or is it not because the testing that apparently is happening is kind of flawed testing because i actually confronted ocho about it and i said hey man how come raid gear is better than the warmonger gear? How uh, warmonger gear is supposed to be the top gear? How come raid gear is better? And he goes, "Have you tested it? Do you know that?" And I go, "No, I just read the forums, and these guys said that they tested." He goes, "Well, I read the forums, and the testing that they're doing is flawed testing, as in there's uh, circumstances or something that is not making it to where it's reliable information." And he goes, the gear that is being down bolstered is supposed to be pretty much just as good as, or around the same level as Warmonger. Of course, it cannot be exactly the same because you could go with crit gear in your uh, crit power gear in your Warmonger stuff, and then the down bolstering will be attack power or spell power heavy. It, it just it can't be identical. He said basically, if you could do reliable testing and uh basically say that it's not you know about level then we'll fix it and he goes because uh, according to everything that we have it should be about the same and i was like well i am kind of going off of just what i read on the forum so maybe we need to do better testing so if any of you guys can do good testing that is not flawed and you do see that the down bolstered raid gear is a lot better than the warmonger gear 
then we need to let Tryon know so that they can fix it. They're wanting it to be right. It's not that they are just favor, uh, you know, doing favorism towards uh, the raid people on this particular issue. It's just that they, you know, if they if something is wrong, they don't know about it, and they need to have good testing done. So there you have it on that. So the Warmonger gear should be really well. Uh, one of the things that I thought was really well done is that they put it to where there is a PvP damage boost to it, the reset bonus. If you get your ranged weapon, uh, your necklace, and your cape all to be from the Marauder Cache, the boxes, then you can upgrade it to where it will give you a 5% damage bonus in PvP. That is something that I see as a very good thing. And I think that the raid gear and stuff like that would needs to be kind of level with the best like warmonger should be level to the t3 gear in a certain way but uh you know maybe not the same but uh the what i'm what i'm basically touching at is that the bonuses can differentiate between the two if you have warmonger gear and it has a pvp damage boost that will make it to where it is really good gear in PvE. So we can transition over into PvE and not be a complete tier behind or something like that. And for us to be so far behind transitioning over into PvE, it does not encourage PvPers to go over to PvE. It just doesn't. Only thing that encourages them to go over to PvE is to get more marks. I mean, they'll, they'll do the instant adventures, they'll do the zone events all that stuff and basically they're just trying to tag a boss or you know the, not time out in uh instant adventures to where they can get their marks and that way that they can get the warmonger gear and all that so it's not encouraging pvpers to go over to pve however making it to where pve players have so much better gear makes it easy for them to transition over to PvP, but just not vice versa. Because if they've got the raid gear, they're going over into PvP and having the absolute best gear that they can possibly have, you know, for the most part, except for getting a three set bonus from Warmonger, which would mean that they only have to have three pieces of Warmonger gear and they're done. They got the raid gear, it's already down bolstered. All they need is the three set bonus after that and they are completely the best that they can be in PvP for the most part. But it's not the same playing field on the other way around. And I think that it can be cured by these set bonuses. If you have it to where uh, the T3 gear actually has a PvE bonus, and then the PvP gear actually has a PvP bonus, it'll make it to where the rating still makes their gear better for rating, but yet we can transition over into PVE and do really well, you know, but we still would want to uh, want to strive for that PVE gear if we wanted to, that way that we can get the set bonus as well. You know, make it even on both sides. Make it to where it encourages people to transition either way and benefit from it. All right, so another good thing that I thought that they did was adding the Warmonger weapons to the store. Now there is a downside to this, so I'll touch on both of it. All right, so let's go ahead and open up the store here and I will show you exactly what I'm referring to. All right, we go to weapons and down at the bottom here, well, there we go. Down at the bottom, you see all the Warmonger weapons. Now, being able to buy your weapon from the Rift store for favor would be an amazing thing because Weapons make or break you in PvP and I'm sure in PvE as well. If you're a DPS class and you do not have a high DPS weapon, you are completely broken for the most part. You just cannot compete with people with a really good PvP or uh, should I say DPS items. And you know, your armor and stuff, it plays a big factor, but weapons kind of make or break you. And for them to make it to where you can actually buy your weapon directly from the store and do not have to rely on an RNG box is really, really good. I thought that was an amazing change. And making it to where you can spend favor to get the Warmonger Marks uh, in order to buy your weapons, very, very good as well. The problem that I have with this is that you can buy it with credits as well. 
So it's it's pretty much known that you can get the very best PvP weapons from the Rift Store for credits. You don't even have to have any kind of RNG. You don't have to have, uh, you know, uh, you don't even have to grind out your favor. You can just buy it. And that sucks. Because if you want to upgrade this item, you know, let's go ahead and look at it. It takes favor infused accelerators and abyssal crusader accelerators. All right, let's go back one. Let's go to upgrade parts. Guess what? You can buy both of these items for credits as well. So that makes it to where you can buy your warmonger weapon, which is going to be the best weapon in PVP for you, and you can upgrade it all for credits. So that sucks. That makes it to where there's no progression. You can just buy your items. And that's not the way it should be. The, uh, Tron has always stood behind that they will not release the best gear in the game for credits. You, you have to earn it. And for PvP, this is the best weapon in the game for us. So for you to allow it to where it can be bought with credits, it's pay to win. It sucks. But you can grind out the favor. You don't have to buy it with credits. But, you know, I guess the justification is that they released, uh, you know, the new raid and stuff. And there's new raid weapons out that are considered better than the Warmonger. So they're actually kind of taking a, a pass on that and going, there is better weapons in the game. We're not selling that for credits, but you can buy the Warmonger stuff for credits, you know, but it's the best thing in PvP. Um, so that, that sucks. That, that's a bad thing there. Um, another thing that is a misconception that's kind of going around is, uh, which it could be true or it could be a misconception, one or the other, uh, is that raid weapons are a lot better than the warmonger weapons. Okay. So, uh, what, and I don't mean by procs or stats or stuff like that. It's supposed to be close to the same. I mean, much much like we were addressing earlier with the the gear the raid gear versus the pvp gear but what i'm mainly referring to is the dps of a weapon so if we actually go to the weapons here and look at the actual dps stat so right here on this uh particular you know uh the range weapon here you got a dps of a, a thousand twenty nine so on raid gear it would be more than that and it was not being down bolstered in war fronts or uh, conquests. So that made it to where somebody with raid geared weapons, they could come in and they had better gear than you could possibly get through PVP. And once it was reported to try on that, that's what was going on. They fixed it. I actually confronted Ocho on this and said, Hey man, you know, do you know this is going on? He goes, it was going on and we fixed it. If it's not fixed, please do some testing and let us know because we want it to be fixed. So the weapon DPS should not be different between the down bolstering and the best uh, warmonger weapons that we have. So that's a really good thing there. So, so that's mostly the state of PVP right now. Range is ruling. You can play melee as long as you got healers. I mean, that has not changed since Nightmare Tide, so no real big update there. Some specs have been buffed up, like Tempest, uh, Rift Blade has been uh, buffed up. Of course, the other ranged classes as well, like Inquisitor, uh, Pyromancer, all that has been buffed up. Apparently, some melee specs may be buffed up in the future, such as Shaman and all that. Uh, the gearing situation is not bad at all if everything is not bugged, as in uh, if the Warmonger gear is the best that you can get in PvP, then, or else real close to the same as the down bolstering, then that is a very good thing. If it's, any, if it's not that way, please report it. Um, and things are good on the gear side, things are bad on the ability side because the time to kill is really short, so otherwise it makes it to where there's no real skill in PvP for the most part. Of course there's a little bit. There, there's still, you know, uh, some skill. As in, you know, I might stick close to this tree a lot more than this other guy because I know I can get blown up. And the moment I see a burst ability on me, 
all I have to do is walk two steps and I'm line of sight. And this other guy is not doing that. So, yeah, it, you know, there's still a little bit of skill. But whenever you can nuke people down so fast, a lot of the skill is taken out. And then it's based on, you know, running the right spec uh, and having the right gear. So, and I don't think anybody wants PvP to be based around just that. But, uh, yeah, that's, that's the gist of it, man. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, leave a thumbs up. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed the shooting from the hip type instead of the heavily edited version of uh, the state, PvP, uh, state of PvP that I did in the past. But, alright guys, I hope you enjoyed it. As usual, my name is Grim, and I'll see you next time.